So in this video we're going to learn how to use a graphing calculator to do the homework problems that you see in 1.7. There is a video tutorial um, on using tables and, gra and your graphing calculator that you're welcome to look at all also in the video tutorials area of course Compass that has general information. I'm going to go ahead and do this specific example to give you another example and uh, more information on how to get used to using a graphing calculator in this course. So. So the problem we have in front of us is from the homework 1.7 homework set, and it's problem number two. And you can see that um, um, a function is given. The function is 35 plus 3x, and we're being asked to fill in some values in part a. Um, for this function, for x values from 37 to 37.5, and so on and so forth. So the question is, how do I do this on my graphing calculator? So let me go ahead and bring in my graphing calculator, and we'll see how to do this together. So here I've got my graphing calculator up, and the first thing you'll um, want to do is, let me um, go to the screen that you normally see is this first one. This is called the home screen. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and enter my function um, in my graphing calculator first. That's 35 plus 3x. So to enter a function, I'm going to come over here to this um, y equals key in the upper left corner. I'm sort of circling it with my cursor. And I'm going to go ahead and press it. And when I press the key, you'll see that the key turns red to indicate that I'm pressing it. So that's the first key we want to press is that y equals key. That's where we're going to enter all our functions when we need to graph a function or to have a function in a table form. So go ahead and press that now. And so, um, so we see we have a number of functions. So you can enter multiple functions. So I'm going to, under function y1, I'm just going to type 35. So I'm going to use the numeric keys, 35, 3, and a 5. I'm going to hit the plus key here over the enter button. And then I'm going to type 3. And then my x variable is right here. It's the second key. It's in the second row, second column, um, starting with the second function now as the first row, so right here. And um, you can see me circling it with my cursor now. That's key says x, t, theta, and n. And for in particular, for us, it's going to be x, so press that key. And then I have my function entered for y1, so that's the first thing I need to do. So once I have my function entered, I can go ahead and set up my table. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, above the graph key up here, it says table in blue. So that's a second function key, so I'm going to press the second button. And then I'm going to, I'm typing the graph key, but it's actually the table key that I'm accessing. It gives me a table with values, but the problem is it's not the values that I want. So the question is, how can I set up the table so that I can control the values on the graphing calculator? So for that, I'm going to go back now, and I'm going to go back to my second function. But I'm going to choose the table setup key. And the table setup key is going to give me some control over the values that appear in my table. So I'm going to hit second. And then table setup. That's above the window key. And you can see it says table start. So that would be the starting value in the table. And then the delta table is the increment. So if I were to use the automatic table feature, the table would start at zero and then would go up in increments of one in the table. But what I want to do is I'm going to want to be able to control the x values that I type. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to position my arrow down here. And um, so the, so there's actually two ways to do this. So let's, we'll go ahead and do both of these and then you can, and then you can choose which one you want. So if I'm going to select auto, so I'm going to press enter now so that auto is highlighted. And uh, if I go back up, in the problem, the first table value starts at 37. So I'm going to type 37 for the starting value. And you can see using the down arrow that the values in the table go up by 0.5. So I'm going to type 0 0.5 or just 0.5. So now my table is going to start at 37 and go up in increments of 0.5. And then I'll have my values. So let me go ahead and uh, so now second function again. And then above the graph key table, so second, and then graph or table, you can see now it'll start at 37, and then it gives me the increment of 0.5. And so I have a value at 37 of 146, and my function y1 at 37.5 is 147.5. 
and I can continue that and I can use the up or the down arrows to scroll up or down in the table. If I press the down arrow I can continue on and then go off the end of the table. If I use the up arrow I can go the other way in the table and I can keep going actually. So I can go backwards or forwards using the up and down arrows as you can see me doing here. Now if you have a table where the values are not e nice and equally spaced like this, the other thing you can do is you can set up the table. So we go back to the table setup menu. I'm going to hit second table setup. And this time under independent variable, I'm going to choose the ask feature and I'll show you how this works. So I'm going to scroll with the down arrow and then the right arrow to highlight ask and then press enter. So now what I'm telling the calculator is, is that I want the x values to be provided by me. That's why it's saying ask me for independent, that's independent variable or x. And then the dependent I want under auto because then the table will compute the y values based on the x values that I'm going to provide. So now if I go back to my second table above the key here, um, see, now the table is blank, and then I can key in any value I want. So I can type 37 and press Enter, and I can press 37.5. And the nice thing here is the values don't have to be equally spaced. So if I wanted to press 37.575, I could do that. I can press 38. I can press 38.5. And then just to show you that I can press anything, I could also press, I don't know, 15.85s. And I can get any value I want. So the nice feature of this um, setup feature on the, on the table is that I can provide any x value and the calculator will compute the corresponding y value. So if you want a lot of the most flexibility in keying in the x values, you want to use the um, ask feature for the independent variable rather than the auto feature. If the values are equally spaced like they are in most of the Homer problems, either feature will work fine and you can choose whichever one you want. So now all I have to do now is I'm going to move my graphing calculator off. I'm going to key in the values. Um, I'm going to type in the values based on my graphing calculator and then uh, we'll go ahead and check our answer and that will complete this tutorial. So I'm going to move the calculator off, but you can see the values there in front of me. So I'm going to type in 146 for 37 and 147.5 and so on and so forth. Okay, so here I am in course compass. The first value was 146 for 37.5, 147.5 for 38. It was 149, and then 38.5, it was 150.5. And I'll go ahead down here on the bottom now on the screen, I'm going to go ahead and check my answer. And so I've got all those values correct. And so now I want a gross pay of $125. So the second part, I'm going to use my calculator again. So now what the problem's asking me to do is to find the pay value associated with 125. Now remember the y values are my pay and, and uh, at 37 I've made 146 so I've got too much already. So here I'm going to do second table setup and I'm going to go ahead and set my independent variable to auto because I want to just go ahead and have the calculator quickly generate the values and I'm going to hope that the value of 125 corresponds to one of the values um, based on an increment of 0.5. If I'm wrong, then I'll have to do this with trial and error, and then I'll use ask for the independent variable if I have to do this um, with trial and error. But I'm going to hope that I can do this with the table. At least I can get close by having the calculator automatically generate the table for me. So back to second table. And here I'm going to press the up arrow to go backwards because I want the values to go down because I'm looking for 125. And I'm just going to keep pressing the values until I get to 125 where I get as close as I can and then I can adjust. But ah, there you see it right there at 30. So um, hours worked X, 30. So if I work 30 hours, you can see my corresponding pay there, Y1, is $125. So now I've got the value I want for that. So I'm ready to answer that question. Move my calculator out here.
and I'll put down 30 hours. That's the pay associated with $125. Check my answer. And I've done a good job. And now I've done problem two. You can see over here under number two, there's a little green check mark that indicates that the problem has been done completely and correctly. And then I can move on, or if I want, I can go ahead and save that. And then come back to it and work on it on another time. So that completes the video on using, tab using the table feature on the graphing calculator to do homework problems in Course Compass.